Good morning, everyone. Uh, excellencies, distinguished delegates uh, and guests. It's a pleasure to have you uh, at this uh, presentation in conjunction with the 109th session of the IMO Legal Committee. I'm Fred Kenny. I'm the Director of Legal Affairs and External Relations uh, at IMO. And today we're going to have a presentation on the work of IHS Market S&P Global that relates to the Legal Committee's work on fraudulent registration and fraudulent registry of ships. As many of you know, IHS Market S&P Global uh, are the uh, designated authority or designated entity to the IMO for the issuance of IMO numbers for ships and uh, companies. Uh, IHS Market S&P Global uh, also, in, uh, on behalf of the IMO, compiles our tonnage figures, which are used uh, for both the depository work in determining uh, the entry into force of uh, IMO instruments, and I know uh, a subject very near and dear to many of the delegates out there, uh, the tonnage figures for uh, your annual assessment. Uh, we're pleased to have with us today from uh, IHS Market, S&P Global, Mark Krishak, uh, who we work very closely with. Uh, Mark has over 45 years experience in the maritime industry and over 20 years working with IHS Market, S&P Global, specializing in vessel and flag registration. Uh, at the end of Mark's presentation, the Secretariat will additionally provide some information on the GSIS modules on ship and company particulars and on ship registry and how the, uh, those modules in GSIS link into the legal committee's work uh, regarding fraudulent registration and fraudulent registries. There will be a Q&A session uh, at the following the presentation. If you would like to ask a question, delegates should use the chat function and write the name of the delegation in capitals followed by floor. Please try not to use the raised hand function as we may not be able to see that. Uh, this, uh, this presentation will be in English only. And uh, uh, for better audio and video performance, uh, the Microsoft Teams desktop application is, is preferable to the web application. And with that, uh, Mark, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Fred, for the introduction. And thank you for allowing us to make this presentation. Uh, due to some laptop issues, Aisha has kindly uh, volunteered to sh share the slides that I presented, and I will start running through them now. OK, if we can go to the first slide, please, Aisha. Thank you. Just a quick brief that effective from the 1st of March, IHS market has become part of S&P Global. Um, and you'll see in responses, emails, etc. when we are now called S&P Global, just in case that confuses people. Um, as Fred has already mentioned, on behalf of the IMO, we manage the IMO numbering scheme for both vessels and companies. In addition, and again on behalf of the IMO, we conduct the yearly IMO tonnage assessment exercise. We have a database in excess of 200,000 vessels and over 240,000 companies. The IMO encourages all member states to supply us with accurate and up-to-date information um, of vessels under their flags. This information is then forwarded to the IMO on a weekly basis um, and is then updated on the GESIS website. In included in the vessels that we supply to the IMO are vessels that we consider are flying fraudulent flags. To identify these flags, we highlight them as flying a false flag. And our definition of flying a false flag is any vessel which transmits, broadcasts, displays, or otherwise engages in the misuse of flag details, which are confirmed by the flag 
by the authorised flag administration has not been legally registered under the flag in question. These will be designated under the flag followed by false. Next slide, please. OK. Uh, how did the issue of fraudulent flags first come to our attention? It began in 2015. And during correspondence with the flag administration of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, we were notified that two vessels were arrested, intercepted in Spain, carrying illegal contraband. Both the vessels had the DRC registration certificates on board. It transpired that these certificates had not been issued by the DRC flag administration. Subsequent investigation revealed the extent of the number of flags which were flying the flag of the DRC. Out of the 84 vessels we showed under the flag of the DRC, only 11 were legally registered. The remaining 73 vessels had been registered without the knowledge of the Democratic Republic of Congo administration. It transpires that these vessels were registered by a company located in London, claiming via their website to represent the DRC flag administration. The website looked authentic and supplied contact details. However, telephone calls were answered with a pre-recorded message asking to leave details and contact via email had to be done via their website. So there was no actual email address. The DRC thoroughly investigated the matter with both the IMO and ourselves. And after carried out carrying out a detailed inventory, we amended our records by removing the 70 vers 73 vessels that were fraudulently flying the flag. These vessels were then recorded as DRC false flag on our records. Next slide, please. OK, so what happened next? In 2017, 91 vessels suddenly appear to be registered under the flag of Fiji. 59 of these vessels had IMO numbers, whilst the others did not, as they did not qualify for an IMO number. The IMO rules state that a vessel has to meet a certain criteria to have an IMO number. Small vessels below 100 gross tons do not necessarily need an IMO number, although this has recently changed to accommodate smaller fishing vessels. SMPG were able to get a list of these vessels from a website just before it disappeared. In our correspondence with the Fiji Flag Administration, we were able to determine that none of these vessels were legally registered. These vessels were then placed under the Fiji false flag. Also in 2017, we suddenly noticed over 150 vessels with IMO numbers appearing to be registered under Federated States of Micronesia flag. Um, and FSM uh, is not actually an IMO member. However, we do record uh, all vessels that have IMO numbers, regardless of whether they are an IMO member or not. Communication with SFM confirmed that none of these vessels were legally registered under, the, under their flag. We were further advised that whilst SF, FSM does flag its own ships, these are running on local, these are locally registered, locally run vessels. And the, they, under the FSM laws, they do not have an international ship registry. And it, also they don't allow vessels to be owned by foreign entities. Next page, please. 
We were also advised that there was possibly probably another 100 plus vessels without IMO numbers that were flying the FSM flag without permission. During a meeting at the IMO with an official from SFM, it was determined that a company was set up called Micronesia International Ship and Business Company Register, claiming to be authorised to register vessels and issue both ship registration certificates and seafarer certificates. Whilst the officials from FSM confirmed meetings did take place with representatives of this company with a view to operating an international ship registry, it was never approved nor agreed. Our records were amended to show these vessels flying under Micronesian false flag. We did inquire how it was possible or how did this company obtained certificates and obtained letterheads and we were advised that probably during a meeting that took place uh, in Micronesia at the SFM offices, um, they believed that somebody stole letterheads. These were then sent to India and within 24 hours these certificates were being issued. Okay, next page, please. Okay, other fraudulent flags. Also in late 2017, we were advised that three vessels appear to be registered under the flag of the Maldives. The registration certificates which were sent to us appear authentic and were accompanied by an email from the Maldives Transport Authorities. It transpires that these registration certificates were forgeries. The legitimate Maldives Transport Authorities advise us that a country doesn't admit vessels that are not owned by its citizens or companies based there. These vessels were owned by a Hong Kong registered entity. The three vessels were recorded under the Maldives false flag. In 2018, vessels suddenly started to appear to be registered under the Samoa flag. Initially, six vessels were involved, but this number increased to over 15. These vessels were being issued with certificates issued by a company based in Thailand. Communication with the Samoa Maritime Authorities confirmed these certificates were not legitimate. The company were involved representing Samoa, but its status as an RO recognized organization was revoked on the 3rd of February 2017. The company continues to issue certificates after this date. Uh, we are in possession of a letter signed by the Samoa Prime Minister dated 7th of June and sent to the IMO confirming that certificates issued after the 3rd of February 2017 are fraudulent. Again, these vessels were recorded under the Samoa false flag. Next slide, please. Okay. okay. Situation, the current situation, situation 2021-2022. During 2021, more fraudulent flags appeared. These include vessels supposedly registered under the flags of Equatorial Guinea, Sao Tome and Principe, Timor-Leste and Zambia. These vessels are recorded by ourselves under the false flags. We also have examples of individual vessels continuing to fly the flag of member states where the registration certificates have been cancelled. Included are vessels under the flags of Belize, Bolivia, Comoros, Mongolia, Nauru and the United Republic of Tanzania. Presently, we are on discussion to the Guyana Maritime Authority as it appears the organization they had representing them 
and with whom they terminated their agreement in August 2021, continue to issue certificates on their behalf without their permission. A fleet reconciliation is now taking place and we envisage at least 10 vessels being added to the Guyana force flag in the very near future. In addition to vessels flying fraudulent flag, there have also been instances of vessels taking over spoofing identity of other legitimate vessels. Vessels in question include the Kingsway and the Sublick. Next slide, please. Okay. Um, so what are we what are SPG doing to identify these and other possible fraudulent vessels? We have in place data exchange agreements with numerous flag administrations. Plus, we receive information from our various other sources, such as class societies, recognized organizations, ship owners and ship managers. This enables us to continuously check, verify vessels to make sure they are legitimately registered. In addition, we also have separate individual agreements with numerous flag administrations, whereby we will not show a vessel under their flag unless it has been confirmed by the flag administration. This applies not only to flag administrations mentioned above, but others as well. The data exchange agreements we have with flag administrations vary. Some we get fortnightly, others monthly, quarterly reports. And these will either include complete lists of vessels registered under the flag or will consist of vessels that have been newly registered or deleted. During our correspondence communication with flag administration, if we are advised that a vessel has been cancelled, deleted from a flag, we will immediately amend our records and unless we have confirmed details of a new flag registration, we will record the flag, the vessel is flying an unknown flag. If a flag administration advises us that a vessel continues to fly broadcast via AIS, for example, flag information after cancellation deletion, then we will record the vessel as flying the false flag. And next slide, please. Okay. So to summarize, um, in total, we have identified over 350 vessels flying fraudulent flags. Presently, as at the 1st of March, we are recording 65 vessels is continuing to fly flags fraudulently. All other vessels have now been re-registered and confirmed under other flag administrations. And at least 12 of these vessels have subsequently been broken up or declare constructive total losses. We'd also like to point out, highlight another concern that has re very recently come to light. This involves the creation of new class societies stroke recognized organizations, both in fact based in the UAE. The two companies I mentioned, Worldwide Register of Shipping, with a website under the name of cstar-group.com, an Eagle Classification Society. We're now investigating the legitimacy of these two organizations, which have issued class certificates and document of compliance safety management certificate under various flags. Our investigation so far has revealed that none of the certificates issued by these organizations appear legitimate. And right, what I've now done is I've put some, I've attached some examples of certificates that are fraudulent and that we have received copies of. So if we could go on to the next slide, please. Okay, this is an example, <coughs> excuse me, of a certificate we received from Equatorial, oh, Equatorial Guinea, supposedly a vessel registered under the flag. Certificate looks authentic, but 
it's definitely fraudulent. The next example, please. Again, this is being issued by the Federated, supposedly by Federated States of Micronesia. And again, the certificate looks authentic, it's got stamps, etc. But this again is fraudulent. Third example, please. Again, a certificate supposedly issued by Samoa. Again, confirmed by Samoa Maritime authorities that the certificate is not legitimate. And I think the last one is a copy of certificate issued by Fiji. Supposedly by Fiji, again, stamped, etc. Looks authentic. Uh, but again, that's been shown as being fraudulent. And our last example is Maldives, where again, the certificate looks real. Um, but again, this has proven to be uh, fraudulent. That, thank you very much, completes my our presentation. Happy to take any questions that are raised. Thank you very much, Mark, uh, for that really fascinating presentation. I, I know that uh, some of this information has been passed to the legal committee in the past, uh, but I think seeing it in a consolidated fashion really, uh, really exemplifies and, and illustrates the scope of the issue that we're facing uh, with uh, with fraudulent registries and fraudulent registration of ships, and and also the 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 more um, the more serious concern is that if these ships are fraudulently registered, uh, then it's very likely that all their certificates are fraudulent as well, and um, and the potential impacts uh, and the threats to the IMO regulatory regime if if uh, if a ship is sailing with fraudulent certificates. And the threats to uh, to maritime and navigation safety and security, and also the protection of the marine environment. Uh, before we uh, go to Q and A, I'd like to turn uh, the the floor over to Aisha Sharif of the uh, Legal Affairs Office, who will be providing some information on how uh, a lot of the information that Mark just provided you is integrated into GSIS so that it's available to port state control. Aisha, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Fred, and uh, and good morning to all, and thank you for, for attending this uh, presentation. Thank you, Mark. And um, I would like to briefly uh, show you two modules uh, of uh, GIZIS that are available uh, to the public, because as you can see here from my screen, I am in the public area. As Secretariat, I have access to Secretariat area and public area. But this is a module that is available to all uh, registered users uh, of GIZIS. And um, so... I was leaked. Uh, I'm sorry, someone... I need to mute someone. <laughs> sorry. Um, so... Um, we have uh, so it's this uh, module is on ship and company particulars and it's a module that uh, that um, uh, has uh, been uh, in GIZIS for a very long time but uh, since last year we have added information in this module to um, to um, enable uh, the display of uh, ships um, confirmed by the administration as not legally registered under that administration's flag. And uh, as explained by uh, Mark, uh, these uh, ships uh, have a, a false uh, flag name. Uh, so if uh, I uh, uh, click uh, and check this, uh, this field, I can search all the ships that are currently uh, flying a false flag, which uh, which are uh, fraudulently registered. We could uh, also look uh, for for a, a particular uh, specific uh, ship uh, number here, uh, but the best way to find the list of all fraudulently registered flag at the moment is to check this box, and you have a, a list of all these ships appearing. 
Um, we have also worked internally and in response to a request from the legal committee to uh, provide information on ships and entities under UN sanctions. So this function is here. And if I click here um, under ship under UN sanctions, which means ships uh, checked uh, against um, UN Security uh, Council sanction list, I can display all the ships that are under UN sanctions at the moment. And you will see that some of them uh, also carry a fraudulent uh, flag. Uh, the same function uh, is possible to, uh, to display um, entities uh, or owning or operating entities under uh, UN sanctions. So we are very happy because it take it took us a long time to to be able to to provide this information on Gizis, and it's information again that I repeat that is publicly available. So it's available to flag states, it's available to port state control officers um, if they want uh, to check uh, this uh, information. And another module that I would like to um, show is a module that uh, following. Um, uh, the assembly uh, resolution um, requesting the IM, the secretariat to, to create a module in Gizis uh, on ship registries. Uh, this module exists under the existing module of contact points and it's called ship registry and it's the list of the registries that countries have confirmed uh, can legally register ships on their behalf. And currently, to date, we have received information from about 33 uh, governments on the entities that can register ships uh, on their behalf. Uh, and with this, I'll give the floor back to you, Fred, and to delegates uh, for questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Aisha, and I also wanted to, to thank both uh, uh, IHS Market, S&P Global, and, and Aisha herself. Uh, they, they put a lot of effort into uh, enhancing the GSIS platform uh, so that uh, information regarding ships flying false flags and, 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 and also ships under UN sanction uh, is readily available to port state control. Uh, I think, as, as as Mark mentioned in his presentation, we first caught wind of this uh, this significant problem uh, through the activities of port state control. Uh, and and our view in the IMO Secretariat is is by providing transparent information uh, and making it available to the public, uh, we can rid uh, the rid the the shipping industry of these ships that are that are operating really without any regulation at all. Uh, our view is that sunshine is the best disinfectant uh, in 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 this situation. So I'd like to open the floor. We have uh, a fair amount of time for Q and A. Um, and if anyone has a question or would like to make a comment, please uh, use the chat function, which is uh, uh, in the upper right hand corner of the Teams module. You'll see there's uh, there's three boxes that say people chat and functions. If you go to the chat, uh, indicate uh, who you're representing and ask for the floor. Uh, we can do that. I see I have one already uh, and it's a question from Canada and the question is, is there a way to display all ships that have a false flag in Jesus, not just the first 30? Uh, Aisha, if you, I'll, I think that's probably uh, over to you. Uh, yes, thank you, Fred. Yeah, I will share my, my screen again. So I come back to uh, the module on ship and company particulars. I click false flag and here if I click search, it's true that you only have uh, uh, the first 30 ships. So you have to click here on advanced search. And this takes you to a little bit. Uh, yeah, you, you, you have to again go back to flag administration and select false flag and start the search. 
and uh, this is uh, the whole list. Yeah, so you have more than 30 ships here. And um, maybe what we could add is uh, the possibility uh, to extract this information uh, either in uh, Excel or or PDF. I think it exists for other modules, and maybe this is some uh, an improvement uh, that we could make if it helps. Uh, but Canada, can you? Did you? Would you manage to find the information again? Thank you. Okay, very good. Um, if if other uh, if other uh, participants have comments or questions, please uh, please ask for the floor. Argentina uh, has a question. Uh, thanks for the very useful presentation. Is there any contact with UN Dewalis to share this information not only to UN members with regard to the Security Council, but also to alert state parties to unclass a fraudulent frag makes a ship without a flag, uh, a ship without flag. Uh, this is broader than the IMO. Um, I don't mean to put uh, Yvonne on the spot, but we do have, uh, I believe, a representative from uh, the UN Sanctions Committee uh, on the call. Yvonne, you, Yvonne, are you here? Would you be able to answer that question? Hello. Hi. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Yvonne. Go ahead. Great. Thanks. Um, good morning, um, afternoon, or evening to everyone. So I'm just reading the question now from Argentina. Sorry again, I had some slight audio problems in reading it now. Um, and the question is whether there are any contacts with the UN to share this information, not only to UN member states, um, but also to alert states uh, to UNCLOS on fraudulent frags. Um, and what makes a ship fraudulent flag and what without? I think that's a really good question. If you read the um, panel reports, uh, what we do have is actually, um, you know, um, with, uh, we, we put out case studies of ships um, that continue to exhibit these um, fraudulent and false flags um, uh, that are being transmitted over AIS. And these would cover the range of um, examples that I think Mark had so well um, described which includes, you know, from vessel spoofing, i.e. digital um, identity long, uh, tampering to really a very sophisticated form of um, ship identity laundering, which uh, the panel lays out in its reports. I would not go into the details of which, except it's a very sophisticated process uh, where the, um, the, the, ship, um, has, uh, the ship has gone through a process where it's uh, uh, digital uh, identity is is no longer attached to the physical ship itself, and so other ships can sort of move into it. So I, I would say the short answer to that is um, yes, uh, uh, this information is put out uh, in the panel's reports. There are also recommendations that are made uh, to try um, at least uh, to 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 shine a light on these um, fraudulent uh, activities that are taking place, and 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 some of the. Uh, measures to address the issue. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yvonne. Sorry to put you on the spot, but uh, but very good answer. I would say, in addition to the information that Yvonne provided, uh, the IMO does attend uh, the conference of the parties to unclass uh, that meeting every year, and we do we do provide uh, an update on the work of the legal committee uh, that includes uh, information regarding uh, the work on. Um, uh, fraudulent uh, registries and fraudulent registration of ships. Yep. Uh, the next question is is from the uh, IMO Secretariat, uh, Mr. Valov in the Technical Cooperation Division. It says, are PSCOs empowered to initiate an arrest of a fraudulently registered ship? If yes, what can the state do to prosecute the owner? Um, so uh, what we have seen done in a number of situations is if, if a ship is flying a false flag, it is actually flying no flag. And that uh, entitles the uh, the port state to assimilate the vessel to statelessness, and a, a stateless vessel can have it law enforced by any uh, by anybody. And uh, so, yes, uh, we have seen uh, vessels assimilated to statelessness and then uh, subsequently prosecuted. 
Uh, Venezuela, floor please. Uh, Venezuela, you have the floor for a question. OK. Please, uh, Venezuela, no question, please. Oh, OK. Thank you. Uh, the next is from UNCTAD. Uh, might it be possible to prove a short document or provide a short document which explains this with the screenshots? Uh, yes, we um, uh, we actually do have a, a Jesus user's guide. Um, Aisha, maybe d does it have uh, instructions on, on these particular modules? I'm not exactly sure, but. Uh, no, but uh, we we had submitted a document to the 108th uh, session of the legal committee with screenshots, uh, but maybe I can add this information on the um, IM web page dedicated to um, the fraudulent registration matters. Okay. I will do All that. Right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Regina. That's a good suggestion. Turkey, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Fred. Uh, good day to all participants. Uh, first, I'd like to thank uh, Mark and Aisha for uh, very useful presentations. My question uh, is regarding to the uh, database. How interval uh, they update the database? Sometimes uh, there was a case for us uh, when we check uh, the information from IMOGIS's database. It was valid. Uh, the vessel was under uh, one flag, and after that, uh, the flag. Some in, after some time, the flag uh, of the vessel just informed us that it's frozen. So, how interval uh, you check uh, that this is update? This is my question. Thank you. Okay, um, Mark. I think that question might be better best suited to you. Of course. Um... It's very difficult. We get numerous requests every day, both from ship owners, ship managers, to change flags of vessels. We get information from flag authorities that vessels have been deleted. We will check these with your new flag administrations. In a lot of cases, by having regular data exchanges, we are fairly up to date with the information we have. Obviously, we're where issues do arise is with fraudulent flag registered vessels. Um, it's a difficult one. We do a lot of checking investigation. Um, if we don't have a data exchange or we don't have information or we can't find new information, it's, you know, we will not justify putting a vessel to, there's nothing to justify putting the vessel under a new flag. Even though the vessel may record, for example, via AIS new flag details, we all know that this doesn't necessarily prove the vessel is flying the flag. Um, for example, just just to quickly sidetrack slightly, but the comments made by Intertanko yesterday regarding these ghost ships and how MMSIs and call signs were assigned to vessels. Well, that's very easy to do. If, if you go onto the ITU public website, uh, you can find a range of MMSIs and call signs that are issued under each flag administration. So it's very difficult, very easy. You have the free, free for the MMSI, the free number code to begin with represents the flag, and then you can put in any any number. And with a call sign exactly the same, you have a call sign range. What happens is these are then issued. Uh, these vessel that information is then put on or fed into the AIS transponder and how this is how these vessels supposedly are traveling around the world without IMO numbers, but with supposed call signs and MMSIs, which are not valid. The ones, the vessels that were mentioned 
these frontline ghost ship vessels, none of those call signs or MMSIs are valid. And just quickly to come back, what else do we do? We also check, obviously, with we have data exchanges, as I mentioned, with flag administration, but with with flag, uh, with class societies, also with PNI clubs. Also, did we get data in from the port state control regimes? One last point I would like to add is um, with these fraudulent vessels find this fraudulent flag. At times, it's very difficult to find any information on them. These vessels majority of them tend not to be calling at ports under the PSC regimes or they're operating in areas where they're just not inspected or they are just switching off AIS. And I think one of the difficulties is, and again, this goes back to CSRs as well. If a, if a, if a registration on a vessel is cancelled, we will record that information, but there's nothing actually on that vessel to say that that flag has been cancelled. Um, if it requires a new flag or a new flag is going to be issued, the vessel has to come into port and the, flag, the new flag administration will uh, have a representative to authenticate the change and issue the new certificates. If an inspector goes on the vessel and he says, please show us the uh, registration certificate, he could be shown a certificate issued, for example, by Fiji that matches the IMO, name, IMO number, the vessel name and the port of registry on the stern of the ship. Um, he has no idea if that, you know, there's nothing for him to say that, you know, that's fraudulent. The one way to check, obviously, is to look on geeses and he will immediately see that it's flying a fraudulent flag. OK, thanks, Mark. Um, we're actually a little bit over time, but I I'm going to keep going because uh, we're getting a lot of really good questions and comments. Uh, Argentina, I think you'll see that in the chat box. Uh, uh, Dorota has put in some information on on how we've communicated with the the conference of the parties uh, uh, to UNCLOS and uh, every year and uh, and thanks for your suggestion on the presentation. We'll take that on board. I think the next uh, country uh, asking for the floor is Georgia. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Fred. Thank you for for giving me the floor. Uh, good day, everyone. Uh, Actually, uh, I just wanted to take the floor to make uh, a brief comment uh, how how affected we are on the Black Sea on this matter. And uh, Mark, here, you have, have a fairly uh, better bear about that uh, situation uh, on, 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 on the Black Sea. But the communication, we can, uh, as, as a member state, I, I, I for example, feel that uh, we have to be more communicative to IMO on these matters because they're the matters that we uh, uh, find out uh, on the emails uh, sent to each other by the administrations. But uh, when we cross-check them available information to, to, to the International Maritime Organization, we don't see that information reach it, reach the, reaching, uh, reaching the Secretariat. That had been the case for me, at least in two flux cases that uh, I think we identified together with uh, the Secretariat that the case had been going. But also the nature of the uh, nature of the of the of the uh, entire situation is very difficult because those ships that are uh, the, those ships that are flying the false flags they're not in best technical condition. So most of the poor states would prefer them to sail out and not to prosecute or not to remove the certificates because they would at a later stage become a headache for everyone, especially in the administration and especially for those officers who take this uh, responsibility on themselves. But uh, we try to do not do that, not to try, but every case that we find out, we, uh, uh, we, uh, we, are, we are removing all the fourth certificates. But there is another problem to that. The another problem is that we receive the certification of ships in less than four hours by some administrations. This is crazy, this crazy thing, because 
I, I, it almost, uh, it almost, uh, I, I mean, uh, equals the same situation as false flag because I'm not sure how this is this is done. And mostly those are the authorized agents as well. And when we cross check with flag administration, the first instance there is that we receive a feedback that they are uh, they are not aware that such registration under their flags flags exist. But when they cross check with their authorized agents. Then they send us updated information that uh, yes, such uh, uh, information exists. Of that, that is why it is absolutely essential that we have a, a clear understanding uh, uh, of uh, authorizing requirements for the for the registration agents. And uh, for us, the case of Micronesia was perfect on that to illustrate. If you communicate the uh, people with Micronesian uh, registration, you would receive a feedback from them directly within five minutes. Yes, everything is OK. But if you try to communicate the flag administration, either you would not receive any response, any feedback or anything like that. So the reliable source for such instances are not, in my experience, the registration agents which are authorized by the flag states. This is a this is a huge uh, uh, headache for us as well, since the uh, substandard shipping is encouraged by this, and we are uh, tied uh, on our hands to act on that. When, uh, for example, the registrations for the ships are received in less than four hours, uh, I mean, this is this is impossible to to do. At least to print and check all the information that they're submitting. So. And also the nature of the situation, and sorry for uh, for a lengthy intervention, is that uh, when I try to, in my personal capacity, try to pursue the scheme, uh, who is acting what, I end up with the same names and same companies who are de behind different flag states. And I just do not have as a country power to act on that because it's, it's interjurisdictional. It goes on an international level. So it requires an international action on that because uh, I, I, would, I would have to go somewhere on an international organization to, to do that. And I'm all for prosecution. It's not best suited. I'm all can give us the technical advice or the expertise necessary. But for the prosecution of such cases, we do not have simply power on national level unless we detain a ship and retain it in our ports for longer periods. And that makes another headache because they are always 99% substandard. And it's a huge headache. So um, this is the uh, situation and uh, uh, communication uh, to IMO. Every instance that I get, we directly supply the information to IMO with all the means possible. And the, and the other, other cases that we identify and from the from the flag states as well, we advise that the information is submitted to uh, secretariat, so we have such information shared between the flag states. But also on the last two cases, the information was shared with the post state control memorandums of understanding, both Tokyo and Black Sea. But the secretariats have shared only with the member states, not with the secretariat. And this is something that also needs to be taken care of and shared because information sharing and as Fred has. Uh, said uh, the sunshine is the best cure is the thing that we need to uh, enhance in such cases. Information sharing, and I think uh, if international action at some point comes up on that, uh, one prosecution would bring a clear example that such comes cannot operate and cannot continue. It affects everyone, especially the seafarers on board. And another point to that is the full certification of seafarers. There is the same thing don't, now we're talking about already a cipher, the human souls. And those are not coming from the best economic background. They're not coming from the developed countries. They're exploited. And this is a huge thing as well. So this is um, uh, my, my comment that I wanted to make here. And thank you for your work uh, at the Secretariat. And uh, from our side, rest assured that we will continue to uh, do our best to give you the uh, more information insight on this uh, along the process as you understand here we don't talk about the details thank you thank you ivana um i i, I had an, another question which actually relates to your to the comment you made and also relates back to the the question that ghana asked regarding um, um 
uh, who's authorized to take action in the case of a fraudulently registered vessel. And then I got another question from Isabella Jones saying, are there any proactive or preventative measures? I think Ivana mentioned that, I, you know, as I mentioned earlier, a, a fraudulently registered vessel can be assimilated to statelessness, which means it can be a, a in uh, the law and regulations can be enforced on that vessel by any country. Um, so there's a combination. I, I think uh, this is, as, as uh, Ivana just um, ju uh, from Georgia just alluded to in, in his comment, this is really an all hands on deck issue. If we're going to rid uh, the fleet of substandard vessels and fraudulently registered vessels, it takes accurate information sharing by port states and flag states uh, so that the people who on the water who are in a position to do something about it have the information so that they can. As as the as uh, Georgia mentioned, there are issues once you get one of these ships and especially if you seize that the issue of what to do with it becomes an issue. Uh, I know that some countries sell them at auction, but if you have a, a ship that's clearly substandard, it may only be available to be sold for scrap uh, and, that, and that may take longer. Uh, so with that, I just did emphasizing the point that, that we are trying to pass as much information as we can, as quickly as we can to, to improve transparency on the issue. Uh, but it does take, uh, it does take uh, committed combined involvement by all. Uh, Myanmar, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Kenny, giving me floor, and also thank you for the arrangement of this presentation. And also thank you, Mr. Mark, for your fruitful presentation about fraudulent registration and fraudulent registry of the ships. So I have one question regarding if in case we post state authority arrest for the fraudulent uh, false flag ships, uh, uh, maybe the ship owner maybe abandon their ship, and if in case uh, we need to arrange for the re repatriation of uh, our seafarers, so maybe uh, the ship itself have uh, MSC 2006, the uh, financial security certificate for seafarer repatriation and financial security certificate, maybe they will be holding. So in this case, the owner owner has abandoned the ship and we and able to contact the ship owner. In this case, uh, uh, for the crew, master and crew for re repatriation of uh, uh, for master and crew. So in this case, the MSC financial security provider stay live or stay responsible for uh, their res uh, their duties to uh, to arrange for repatriation or seafarer. Uh, that is my question. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Myanmar. And that that's actually an outstanding question uh, because that that is a real danger. I think uh, it was the the. Ivana from Georgia kind of alluded to this too, is that if you have a fraudulently ves registered vessel, one can assume that all the certificates are fraudulent as well, including the certificate of insurance for abandonment. So if you actually seize a vessel, you may wind up in an abandonment situation for the crew. Uh, although the crew, it, it's, you know, you, you also have to check to see if their certificates are valid. So it can become a very complex matter, but th that is probably the worst case scenario is that you have a fraudulently registered, registered vessel that then gets abandoned. Uh, because uh, then determining, you know, who the flag state actually is uh, that, that has the, the primary responsibility for uh, repatriation of the seafarers uh, can become extremely difficult. So it's, it's one, those are the kind that we have had them too. We, we have had abandonment cases that were linked to fraudulently registered vessels and, and they tend to be very difficult to resolve. So you raise a, a really uh, an excellent point. Um, uh, I see that Panama Thank has. You. I see that Panama had a question: Is it, has it been considered the opportunity to create mechanisms on behalf of IMO at the international level where a tax could be levied 
on any vessel engaged in these illicit acts. Um, that sounds like a, a really good proposal to make to a future session of the legal committee. Um, there hasn't been um, uh, proposals along those lines with respect to enforcement uh, under the agenda item of um, fraudulent registries and fraudulent registries of ships. Uh, the legal committee yesterday did approve the, the commissioning of a study uh, regarding the the impacts of fraudulent registries and, and fraudulent registration of ships, uh, and that study will be prevented, um, uh, presented at Leg 110 next year, and, and there may be opportunity for additional outputs to be created uh, as a result of, um, of the issue. I have one more question um, uh, uh, that I think I'll, and then I'll close at that point is, and it's from UNCTAD. Is there any general information available from P&I clubs about the implication for liability insurance coverage? Uh, the, actually the, the IT, the IMO ILO joint database, um, uh, on abandonment, for example, lists whether, um, whether, uh, in an abandonment case, there is cover, um, and in uh, it, the most recent reports from the ITF indicate that more than 50% of the ships that are abandoned actually don't have insurance cover. Um, so, uh, and, and that's a real problem. And as I said, if you've got a ship that's fraudulently registered, um, it, there's a real question as to whether they have valid insurance because they probably don't, as, as Mark said. Uh, you know, the, the places where they may be trading, uh, you know, they may not have the resources to, to actually check and, and see what's behind the, the blue cards, but uh, it, it is an issue. Uh, so thank you for that question. I don't see any more questions and uh, we've, we've gone 15 minutes over, which, uh, which I think means that uh, this has been a very successful presentation. I want to thank uh, Mark Krushak, um from IHS Market S&P Global uh, for providing the information. Uh, also to Aisha Sharif on the Secretariat who, who did all the logistical work and also was a presenter. So she, she worked very hard on this. Um, I hope this, uh, this presentation has been thought provoking for you uh, and um, and uh, leads to consideration on, on future actions that could be taken within the legal committee at, at future sessions. Uh, and um, with that, I think we'll close the presentation and thank you very much.